Thank you, Yusuf Rubam. Uh, we gather to celebrate Fatima, peace be upon her, uh, who uh, embodies the highest feminine qualities within the Islamic religious tradition. We also gather to celebrate women, and we gather to celebrate peace and women as peacemakers within our sacred religious traditions, especially Islamic Christianity and Judaism. This is the fourth annual Site of Fatima conference organized by the Merkazi International Imam Hussein Council, chaired by Ruba Mehdi Rizvi, a Pakistani barrister, an English solicitor, and an indefatigable human rights campaigner. Uh, she is also wife of my dear friend Shabib and the mother of my honorary grandson, Shir Abbas. I am Shir's uh, Jewish grandfather. Yeah. Uh, I happily serve on Rubab's council and collaborate uh, in developing this conference. I rejoice in assisting my beloved Rubab, my spiritual daughter. I delight in the participation today of two of my dear friends, Bishop of London Richard Charters, and ML Muslim Lifestyle Magazine editor Sarah Joseph. But it is most of all your attendance which makes this annual conference such a, a beacon of hope and light for our world, for peace-loving Muslims, Christians, and Jews, Hindus and Buddhists and Sikhs and people of all religion everywhere. Within the past fortnight, we have rejoiced in the Diamond Jubilee of the coronation of Her Majesty the Queen. I am among the very few in this room old enough to remember the coronation itself. Uh, what a magnificent event the Jubilee was for a phenomenal woman. No one has done more to build peace among all of the people of the United Kingdom and the entire world than Her Majesty. Although one would uh, never refer to Her Majesty as an ordinary woman, least of all somebody so American as I, she does, she does provide a, a model in her, for our times in her marriage as a mother who combines deep religious devotion, career, and community service. Uh, ten years ago, I participated as a rabbi in the Golden Jubilee in, of the Queen's Coronation in Westminster Abbey. Uh, the BBC determined that I was the only American participating officially in the commemoration. Uh, they interviewed me uh, as such to inquire how I felt to be celebrating Queen Elizabeth II when my ancestors had rebelled against George III 225 years earlier. I responded that at the time of George III actually my ancestors were being chased around the steppes of Russia by the Cossacks. Uh, how wonderful it is uh, to live in our time and in our land. That is why we he are here today. It is in our time and our land. Since we last met for this conference in honor of Sayyida Fatima a year ago, the mother of our convener, Lord Nazir Ahmed, sadly died. In the many years that he and I have been friends, we have spoken of many topics, especially uh, interfaith relations between our great religious traditions uh, and our love of food. We also have spoken of our respective extraordinary mothers who never met in this world. I would like to think that our two respective mothers are at this very moment rejoicing together in heaven that their two sons are collaborating today. I dedicate my comments today to their memories and to the memories of all of the wonderful women 
of all religious traditions who spent their lives on earth exemplifying the very highest virtues and uh, peacemaking in our traditions as Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, etc. What is peace? It is not simply the absence of conflict. Rather, true peace takes the moral understanding that all people learn from their own traditions and extend it beyond the boundaries of normal social convention and apply it different from themselves. In other words, peace is to take seriously the biblical injunction to love thy neighbor as thyself. The women of our different religious traditions understood this kind of peace. Today, when we come to celebrate Fatima, who is considered one of the four most important women in the Islamic tradition, we know that she not only understood this, but that she had wonderful female role models to follow. She herself is a model of harmony, peace, and tranquility within her home who brings these qualities to a society and even reaches out beyond the people of Islam to Christians and Jews. However, it was not always easy, because changing a society never is. The other three women important to Islam, Asya, Mary, and Khadija, they face some of the same difficulties and demonstrate to Fatima some of the events she too come to expect when a society changes. But for all of these difficulties, Fatima knew what was right, and she did it. We can go back as far as the biblical story of Moses, where we know that Pharaoh had decreed the death of all male children born to the ancient Hebrews. The story of Bithia tells of one woman who went against the decree. She has an important place in both Islamic and Jewish traditions. In Jewish tradition, she is the daughter of Pharaoh, who takes Moses from the water, names him, and raises him as her own child. In Jewish biblical tradition, not much more is said about it. However, rabbinic tradition has generated a number of stories. One story says that her maids refused to save the infant Moses, knowing he was a Hebrew child. As a result, Bithia's arm miraculously lengthens so that she can save the child herself, a literal rending of a metaphor to extend love beyond one's community. She always protects Moses and is known for her loving kindness and righteousness. For this reason, she is never afflicted by any of the plagues that God sins against the Egyptians, and is the only firstborn female to be spared. She leaves Egypt with Moses, becomes a proselyte, and is said to marry Caleb of the house of Judah. In Islamic tradition, Bithya is known as Asya, the second of the four important women of Islam. According to Islamic tradition, she is an Israelite who is the wife of the Pharaoh. As in Jewish tradition, she saves and raises Moses, disobeying the Pharaoh, and demonstrating a love for her neighbor that goes beyond the boundaries of her society's social conventions. In Islamic tradition, too, she becomes a follower of Moses. However, in this tradition, Pharaoh tortures her for her loyalty to God, and she dies. The differences in the Muslim and Jewish Traditions seem to demonstrate how unimportant the boundaries of culture are for saving a life. Together, these two stories portray the life of a strong woman who stands up for what is right and good by raising a child with loving kindness, a child whose life would otherwise be forfeit. Her faith is so great that she cannot follow the strictures of the society in which she lives. She may not bring peace in her lifetime, but through her loving kindness, she sets up the conditions for an everlasting peace. In Jewish and Christian tradition, the messianic dream 
of everlasting peace is represented in the figure of King David. It is said that one day his descendant will establish true peace. One of these descendants is Mary, the third of the most important women in Islam, the mother of Jesus. She, like Bithya or Asya, is a nurturer of the future. Though Mary stays within the bounds of her community, she clearly goes beyond normal conventions of her society. She nurtures Jesus in his youth and becomes the first proselyte. She was present at his first miracle, many of his teachings, and his crucifixion. She supported him and helped to build a future of peace, even though she too could not establish peace in her own. The fourth woman considered important to Islam is Khadija, the first wife of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the mother of Fatima. Khadija is the first follower of the Prophet and is considered the mother of Islam. She was a renowned businesswoman whose caravans traveled to many foreign communities. When Muhammad had his first revelation, her response was, Allah would surely protect him from any danger and would never allow anyone to revile him as he was a man of peace and reconciliation and always extended the hand of friendship to all, demonstrating the value placed on peace and extending friendship to all. Khadija surely taught these same values of peace and reconciliation to Fatima, for Fatima extends herself beyond the boundaries of her own people and is known to help Christians and Jews who need help as well. Fatima, daughter of Khadija and Muhammad, peace be upon them, contains within herself the teachings of Bithya, Mary, and Khadija in her love of truth and her willingness to extend herself beyond the bounds of convention and culture. If Bithya and Mary are famous as mothers who nurture the future and Khadija as wife who encourage the future, when Fatima is mother, wife, and daughter, nurturing children, husband, and father. She, like all of these leaders of women in the world and paradise, helps to create an entirely new future, a future of goodness and righteousness that could not exist without them. She not only teaches her children, as all these women did, but she protects and consoles her father, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in her loyalty to him and to God. She extends herself to all who are in need, regardless of their background or tradition. We would do well to learn from them all, but Fatima especially, who encompasses the virtues of these women. These four important women in the Islamic tradition seem to understand the importance of peace and its demand to extend one's self beyond the boundaries of social convention. All of these women understood that the future possibility of peace could only be nurtured if it was based on a solid foundation of loving kindness and that there would be times when loving kindness would be outside of accepted social conventions. Thus, in each case, they had to extend themselves beyond the boundaries of the social conventions of the societies in which they found themselves in order to establish the conditions of true peace. Peace be upon you. Salam alaikum and shalom alechem. These are the greetings of peace that come from our religious traditions. The way to turn these greetings into a reality is to extend them to all the peoples of different traditions, even when social convention tells us otherwise. These are the lessons of these four women, wise women. Peacemaking is not easy. It requires an awareness of truth and the willingness to nurture that truth with love and compassion. Even if these women did not know peace in their own times, their actions tell us that they understood the nature of everlasting peace. The word for peace in Arabic, salam, and shalom in Hebrew come from the same three-letter Semitic root, 
in the ancient Semitic languages, shalem, meaning whole. According to the Jewish mystical tradition, the Kabbalah, the world was once shalem, but has become a shattered urn, a world of war and hatred. It is incumbent upon each one of us to find ways to make the world whole again, to restore it to peace, to salam, to shalom. Every moment, every day in our lives, piece by piece, piece by piece, E-A-C-E, I-E-C-E, it matters not, each of us glues the world urn back together to shalom, salam. That has been our sacred mission this afternoon. Wa salam, shalom. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rabbi Mark Weiner, for such a wonderful day of how faith and religion can play an important role role in peacemaking and the role of women in both the Jewish and Muslim traditions.